Thank you. Thanks for that wonderful introduction. So today we're going to talk about this quiet revolution, IoT. So we have this revolution, the emergence of IoT and the ubiquitous connection of the internet. And it's leading to unprecedented level of interaction between humans and their devices. And as I go along in the presentation, you'll see uh, how that's uh, happening. These devices will affect us in every aspect of human life. But the question is, who's going to manage all of these devices? Humans right now, we have a very extensive relationship with devices. I mean, we're looking at a thermostat, but there are so many. And just since coming, since the time you woke up and you came here this morning, you've probably interacted with a thousand. You don't know it, but from the sensors on the road to the device in your, in your hotel room, if you were like me, who traveled from a long distance. Turn it up, turn it down. Then you have the Internet of Things. And we have billions of devices, billions of devices that are going to be created. All of these devices are vying for your attention. These devices are going to be producing terabytes and terabytes and terabytes of data. The problem with this much data is that over time, as humans, we ignore the devices until something goes wrong. That's when we pay attention. So with this much data coming towards us, that is the end result. So this is what it looks like. You know, if you talk to the average person out there and you talk about IoT, for us in this room who are more on the tech side, we don't see it necessarily as such a monster. But if you talk to the average person, like my mom, for example, this is what it looks like. Way down in the lower left-hand corner are the users. And it's this much data that is coming towards us. Whether it be Fitbit, whether it be a smartwatch, your smart lock, I mean, you name the device. They're all producing a whole tsunami of data. Well, we at Argon, we've created a personal AI that helps users manage this data. So let's see how, let's see Argon in action. Could you? Cat, may I have a few minutes with you to update tomorrow's schedule? Hey, yes, Argon. You have nothing on your schedule for tomorrow. Is there anything you would like to add to tomorrow's schedule? Yes, uh, set the alarm for 8 a.m. and remind me that I have a meeting with the designers at 10 a.m. Great. I updated your schedule. Thank you, Argon. All right, so what is personal AI? Personal AI is a unique category of AI that's focused on the individual. A typical Argon user will have their personal AI seamlessly and invisibly manage household and office devices. Personal AI enhances the daily life and lifestyle of the individual. And you can think of Jarvis, Tony Stark's personal AI butler from the Iron Man movies. making the tsunami work for IoT creators. Because as I said earlier, there's a, lot, there's a tsunami of data. At Argon, we have created, well, first of all, you need a standard for IoT. And at Argon, we created an API so that you can take advantage of personal AIs. IoT creators can seamlessly integrate with Argon through our Rebel API. By the way, all of this information is available on our website. When you add IoT and AI, you get what's called a phantom web. And what you're seeing here is a personal AI, in this case, Argon, as the center or the hub of the user, and of course, all the different connected areas. And down in the lower left-hand corner, you're looking at IoT devices and sensors. And the personal AI here is integrating all of that information into the uh, lifestyle or into actionable decisions that the individual can make. 
in some cases, the individuals will be able to either make a decision themselves or they can say to the AI, you go ahead and make a decision. A good example would be your thermostat. If you're away from home, you might just want the AI to go ahead and say, there's nobody home, turn the AC off, save you some money. On the way back, three, let's say uh, about a mile or two away, it'll turn it on. So that's the case where you can, auto you can let the AI make that decision for you. But then of course, you always have the option of deciding for yourself. And of course, on the upper left corner here are the different ways in which you can interact with your personal AI. The, the typical one that most people are familiar with is the smartphone. But over here, you're looking at a smartphone, you're looking at a laptop, you're looking at a, a um, navigation system in a car, you name it. And of course, over on the left-hand corner, as I mentioned, our, um, what's happening there is those are sending lots of um, data from a sensor reading. So if you are, let's say, um, a garage door, you can, you know, you'll be able to send that up to Argon so it knows whether the garage door is open or not. But all, but all of this leads to what we call the phantom web. And the idea behind all of this is that it's supposed to be invisible to the user. If you walk away with nothing else, remember this. If your mom cannot understand IoT, it's not gonna make a, it's not gonna really take off like it should. It's supposed to be easy. And if you remember back from just a few years ago before we had USB, if you went and got a hard drive, the trouble you had to go through to put drivers on the computer to get it to work. Now you have a USB drive, you stick it in, and it's so easy, S plain and simple. And that's the whole goal of the personal AI. So what will the future look like? Well, users will live in a fully connected world. Devices and technology will vastly improve our lives. The key word there is invisible ways. So we talked about the example of the, you coming home and it turns the AC on for you. You don't need a notification. You don't need something telling you, hey, I'm gonna turn the air conditioner on. Users can easily manage their devices and make informed decisions. And that's the case where you can, the AI can defer to you or you can defer to the AI. So at the end, when the revolution is over, everyone wins. Thank you.